Welcome back everyone. We are moving to the, the last and final panel discussion of the three days of workshop. The panel discussion is will be going to address the way forward, the short term action and the long term plans. We have four panelist speakers for this panel discussion representing the four um, collaborators and collaborating organization. Mr. Salvatore Pinisoto, Secretary General of International Rubber Study Group. Mr. Vincent Dietz, Director C4 uh, FTA Program. Datu Dr. Abdulazi, Secretary General of IRDB. And Mr. Jerome Sanidue, the rubber value chain correspondent, Sirat. We had three days of uh, deliberate discussions on climate change and its impact on the natural rubber systems. And all the discussions we had last two days and especially in today, it is uh, um, interestingly and uh, emphatically pointed out that there is opportunity for opening multilateral dialogue on mitigation and adaptation strategies on climate change impact on NR system. But about natural rubber integration into the international space, less is heard about natural rubber, it's an open fact. And what the international fora could do to address this as a way forward on what we heard in the last three days. There is enough scientific evidence and the science-based results on the impact of climate change on the natural rubber systems and flora. But the doubt is that whether all this information is well communicated, um, smartly communicated to the general rubber community or the climate change community. Yes, there is a gap in that space. Even though we have strong research and the results based on this, it has to be well communicated and we need collaboration with the, uh, the private sector to address many of these challenges. As we heard that the business is not as, not as usual, it is changing. So how we can address this in a collaborative way from bottom up approach, and of course, it should be a holistic one. I will pose two questions to all the four panelist speakers, and what should be the way forward? I am keeping that open to, to address that question. The first one is, what do you retain from this event? What stands out? This is a common question. Um, I would like to place that to the four panelist speakers. Maybe I, I will first give the ball to Mr. Vincent. Oh, okay. Thank, thanks, uh, Lakshmi, and, and for, for this, this introduction, and, and, and thanks, thank you for the presenter. Just a, a, a few statistics because some of uh, our, our colleagues in the back office. Uh, just told us it may be interesting to you. Uh, we had four, 560 registered participants in this workshop, and we overshoot our targets. And and, and each day, uh, over three uh, or close to 300 participants each day. Not necessarily the same, but just to 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 give you these numbers. I think it's a thank to all of you for participating, and also for the lively, the very lively chat and question and answer. More than 160. Uh, questions. Uh, not all have been answered yet. We're going to look into that. But just thank you all for 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 the participation, the time, and the interest. What to retain from from my perspective? You know, I'm not a rubber expert. <laughs> uh, I come from other fields that are related: land use, climate, uh, plantations in general. But I think what is striking with rubber research, uh, first through what we wanted to do in this science workshop, is that there is a, a very big spectrum of, of research, a diversity, and, and that is also striking when we work in an agriculture organization like the CGIR. Uh, rubber tree has been what uh, domesticated a bit 
more than 100 years ago and there's not been so many cultivation cycles <laughs> uh, in the planet so uh, and 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 despite that there is there's been a, a big amount of research immediately uh, targeted to the, the question of production the technical aspects so very demand driven and very collaborative and that is first very striking from 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 i think from to show also what verbal research can 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 do um, the second point is, I, I think, uh, the title of this workshop was Natural Rubber Systems and Climate Change. And it's very striking how the work system is, is very right for, for, for rubber. Just look at the labor component. Uh, there is a need to, to, to understand what can be done. Oh, there is some, some uh, phone ringing, but okay, it won't last long, sorry. Uh, you need to understand how the biophysical condition combined with the possibilities of technical itineraries, and then uh, how that can also play with, with labor, for instance, uh, the tapping uh, dimension. Uh, I found the, the, the discussion in the first day very interesting. Uh, then, of course, systems approach means also Sorry for um, okay. I'm good. Systems approach means also that um, you need to consider various components, even also in the in the in the way you look at the environment. And has been an interesting discussion in the chat between nutrient recycling and and you know and you, the use of, of wood for the for the bioeconomy. So rubber systems. Uh, uh, then uh, I, I would say the 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 issue of of climate vulnerability pests and interaction with pests and diseases really highlight the importance of, of monitoring and there is here a question is it monitoring of rubber per se or is it also included in 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 the broad agriculture and climate monitoring system that that countries and and regions need need need, need, need to put in place uh, two two more points just from the key points to retain i think the centrality of the question of land use we've touched about it uh, some now may see wood and perhaps rubber as something bad, even if it's natural product, just because it may be the result of deforestation, etc. We, we, the, the sector needs to bring a response to, to this, that's the first thing. And then uh, there is the issue of marginal and, 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 and core and non-marginal zone for, for, for rubber. Both of them are going to be disrupted by climate change. Uh, and, and, and how can we learn lessons from what uh, is going on in marginal areas in terms of future adaptability is, is, quite, is quite important. The la uh, two last points, technology transfer. Uh, we've touched about, about that, the genetic resource aspects of, of course, but also uh, I would say the, the, um, the technical itineraries, how to conduct rubber, agroforestry system, diversified systems, uh, and up into the, the value chain aspects, the diversification of, of, of produce out of, uh, of, of latex, et cetera. And I think that the, this is a key point for the future. Lastly, I think a key selling point, it's a, it's a fact. Perhaps we need more data, we need more quantitative data. Uh, how the, the social aspects and the smallholder, as I think Alexandre mentioned that in his latest intervention, it's very, very important. Uh, the climate, uh, the, the climate action is, go, is is now going to be, uh, you know, people centers. We we have a, a call for being more cautious to that, even in, in the current COVID nineteen crisis. Um, this is something in, that is recognized by the SDGs, and 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 that is also a very strong point of this of this workshop. Even if it was a climate change oriented workshop, this is the rubber is able to bring a climate change response that is more holder not only smallholder sensitive, but directed to, to, to smallholders and, and, and their needs. So these are the points to retain from my end, but I guess there may be many others. Thank you, thank you, Vincent. Um, I am passing the ball to Dr. Assis. To take a look at the history of rubber, Actually, rubber, when it was first planted, you know, basically the, the, uh, the Europeans, British, in Malaysia, in, in different parts, even in Sri Lanka, and they started out as a plantation crop. They did not start out as a smallholder crop. Plantation, and then over the years, with the labor problem, everything, and then you have got choices. In the case of Malaysia specifically, there is a conversion from rubber 
they've gone into oil palm, basically the estate sector. So today you have only about less than 10% of the area under rubber owned by plantations. So what, what the problem is, when we talk about deforestation, everything, unfortunately, you put together all the smallholders who own their land. I think this is an important difference because the smallholders, they own the land, they saw what estates are doing, and there was a very good collaboration between the estates and the small holdings nearby. They provide planting material. So the smallholders realize this is something very, very good. It gives them a steady income. Sometimes we, we refer to it, they are having like an ATM machine behind their house. When they need the money, once the trees mature, they can harvest, keep the rubber for some time and then sell. So this is just to give you the history of the thing. Then what has happened, these smallholders, now let's assume that we know, we all know rubber is a very good tree species. I think ultimately when you get satellite pictures in the future, uh, we know that there are already about 13 million hectares being planted. And we know that it is a very efficient converter of the, to reduce the carbon dioxide emission, very efficient because producing the, the latex material. So you have other species. We are only commercializing the heavier Brazilensis. So we need to do this. The point I'm trying to make is this. Let's now assume with all this problem of warming, global warming, suddenly somebody tells you it's good to grow rubber. And then you tell the smallholders, please grow rubber. Do you know that to grow rubber, you need the capital. And for us, we're quite lucky. We have got a system, the British level system. You collect cess, you have replanting cess. Other countries don't, don't have that sort of a structure. So what happens is the investment is very heavy. That's why when we defend smallholders, we feel what they are going, going, going through. And I give you another example. When we were doing the expedition, I wrote to the FAO. I said, can you help us with this expedition into Brazil to collect the different species? The response that came back was, rubber is not under the concern of FAO because it's an industry crop, it's a tire company crop. That was the response. So now you can explain why we had the difficulties getting to this, you know, this cop to get the rubber being registered very clearly. The other problem was there was a deadline in the previous one, Kyoto Protocol, something, be, you know, before certain dates. But now I'm very happy, at least we have this opportunity. And I want to thank the C4 people because it's an eye-opener that they, we now need to sit down together and make the story known. Because you have no less than 10 million smallholders. And majority of them is their own land. They are, they are not going to the forest to cut their own lands. And they invest to grow this, this uh, rubber. And then when the investment goes sour in a way, price very low for the last, maybe it was good in 2011. After that, it just went down and down. So under the current situation, we would like to encourage them to replant. But how can they replant? They don't even, you know, they're not able to pay the installment for the television, for the motorcycles. So this has posed a problem, a crop that we say is very good for poverty alleviation has become a problem for the smallholders who have gone into this. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the young people are not interested. They're not interested to go into the rubber planting. Very, very difficult. Many countries try this. Very, very difficult unless it is something that they go in, they can see that the return is worthwhile. Because the young people, they are educated, they can see that, you know, their parents work very hard for a very meager income. And sometimes now they work hard, the income is so small. So some young people are telling their parents, don't waste your time. We can send you money. You know, in some countries, this is happening. Malaysia especially, so the, the children will send the money. Okay, that one... Now, if you want to encourage them to replant, they are not in a position without that to, to replant. So this is the first part that we must understand. The industry, it is a smallholder industry. It's no more an estate, except for those few plantations. I think I have to highlight that. I still have time to continue. Um, I will come back to you for the next round. i like to move that. Ah, okay, I just, I just want to touch on a few other things because we are talking about midterm and long term. The point I'm trying to make is, please, you know, that we have to work together, get all the other species included in the commercial. Very, very important. Just imagine, it's a business opportunity. You have 10 species in front of you. You are only looking at area of resiliencies. 
we must keep a look at this and that's why we want to go to peru we hope to get the the uh, the cooperation of the government there to bring the different avian species and then include this in our program for breeding thank you for the time being thank you dr rasi certainly we heard about this also how we could bring natural rubber in the national adaptation plants and then the ecosystem based approach we could bring in and certainly that could be a way forward to address the issues you already pointed out the case of small growers i'm asking the same question to jero so what you could retain from this event and what stand out from a sirat perspective thank you very much uh, I, i would like to, first of all to thank you for the excellent presentation we have shown uh, during these three days uh, and i retain the diversity of the type of presentation uh, we seen some uh, scientific presentation with state of art last result of some experiment and also some feedback from the field from different country and even bioeconomy sustainability of wood and climate change policy and i think it's very important and i think it's the first time we have this diversity inside of only one workshop on our or webinar my feeling uh, after these three days uh, is there is a very little scientific knowledge about natural rubber system and climatic change and we have a very huge gap and we need as you mentioned uh, this morning to have more data about this this is very important just an example uh, in terms of the understanding of ecophysiology mechanism from the carbon of air to the carbon of natural rubber in biosynthesis biosynthesis we have very very few data only and this is i think very a key uh, problem are we aware uh, we have seen also some data from the positive uh, regularity effect on the climate uh, Uh, and also uh, the positive effect of uh, rubber tree but by example we have not we have not seen some data between uh, this uh, effect and the rainfall is there any link between rubber tree uh, forest and rainfall for the moment i don't know we have seen also uh, and it's very good the capital importance of cover crops associated crops on the entire line and this is very very good we also seen some uh, by rubber tree should be used for reforestation in degraded zone and this is very important also uh, remember that also rubber tree is a specific green factor perhaps only the only one in the world and uh, because this tree can catch carbon from the air and transform its carbon in polyisoprene used for the mobility of the people in the world and this is very very important uh one i think one topics uh, uh not very uh shown during this uh, workshop is uh, socio economy topics we have only few presentation only uh, from sri lanka uh, about the social aspect and the impact of uh, climate change with the small order problem of livelihood and i think it's necessary to reinforce these topics to have more data of the real life of small farmer in the world uh, this is very important and uh, donc last last remark for for us uh, as you mentioned there is a very uh, problem of communication uh, of natural rubber in the world but also 
uh, problem of uh, less of data, uh, real data, uh, to, to implement um, many very important projects because uh, we know that uh, there is a problem of finance. Uh, the problem is uh, very huge, and this is why it's important to have more communication of data and scientific data. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. The same question to Ms. you, Mr. Sabatore. What do you retain from the event and what is the standout from an IRSC perspective? I cannot agree more with my colleagues, uh, of course. Uh, uh, I, I do think that uh, uh, research and development is very important that science when we speak about uh, topics like uh, climate change and the impact on natural rubber it is extremely important um, there, a lot has been done of course but uh, a lot as jerome said um, should be done and uh, i think now we have to focus uh, our attention on actually the topics that we think uh, are a priority when it comes to uh, to research and development also because funds are not uh, always available and i think now everyone has to make an effort to concentrate on what really uh, on what really matters mm -hmm. uh, on the social Social aspect, I already said uh, before in previous session, I think this sector has a big gap in terms of uh, um, collection of data uh, in relation to the social aspect of um, in the natural upper field. Uh, we don't know much. Uh, I think many governments don't know much. Uh, some some have better information than, than others, but overall, no, we have a, a, a lack of data, and we need absolutely to improve. And uh, I think it is a field um, that, uh, uh, from a SG perspective, would be more and more uh, developed uh, because really the sector needs uh, this kind uh, this kind of information. Um, so I, we need a holistic approach on this, um, but depends a lot on us. Now I think you now when Nadir said or mentioned, uh, I went to FAO and they said it's not our business. I think <laughs> uh, part of the responsibility is ours, you no? Know, because we we are the guys involved in rubber, and we need to create uh, the field uh, such as other big organizations such as FAO or UNCTAD or others actually see rubber as an opportunity, as an opportunity to develop, to investigate more, to bring funds. You know, I think you know, we, we need to have this kind of activity, but it relies on us, on our capability to put together our efforts and uh, to make the case for rubber and natural rubber. So this is what we should do, in my view. Okay, thank you, Salvatore. I think it's so all the panelists are well aligned in the same thought. Yes, we need to make a big noise on the rubber and the importance of rubber as a sustainable raw material and what the rubber could play in the sustainable development of the rubber economy. Yes, that is very important and key, but there is missing information and missing data, and we need to properly communicate that into a wider audience. Certainly, we have to prioritize which is the, the key areas we need to invest because research needs funding. And to bring or attract fundings, prioritization of the research areas is very much important. So altogether, looking at the, the detailed deliberation in the last three days, I would like to uh, hear from all of the four panelists. What do you see as a way forward 
to address what we heard during the last three days of the discussion. Maybe I will start that with the, the Savatore. What is the way forward? Uh, the way forward uh, is um, to me very clear. You now, first of all, we have to, uh, now we will uh, certainly uh, distribute the proceedings of this workshop, uh, make available to everyone. Uh, we certainly um, have to, to have a follow up. Uh, involving the organization that has been involved in this, uh, in this workshop, so IRDP, uh, C4, and CIRAD, uh, and also others. And we have to uh, find a, a way to put together an action plan. So we need to uh, act now, because the time of uh, long discussion um, is over, and uh, we need really to uh, have some uh, uh, good ideas on how to bring this agenda uh, forward. So um, this is what, what I see in very short um, period of time uh, to try to identify some good uh, action. Thank you. Thank you, Salvatore. What about you, Ms. Uh, Jerome? On what do you see as a way forward of the, the, our three days of discussions on climate change workshop? Well, uh, I totally agree with uh, Salvatore uh, that now it's important that uh, we share the priorities uh, in terms of topics uh, and, uh, and after uh, how we can together find some uh, institution, public sector, private sector to finance these topics. Because uh, I think we have many, many ideas uh, that we can share together. Uh, very often the problem is that uh, to catch some finance international, international institution. Uh, and I think it's uh, and uh, some people from uh, Cypher mentioned some institution and uh, they can help us to, uh, to finance these uh, topics. Donc, uh, I think as uh, I've mentioned by the uh, laboratory uh, to put in place an action plan uh, to prioritize uh, scientific and topics and also after how we can uh, finance uh, in terms of institutional finance. Thank you, Jerome. Certainly, once we have the, the action plan and the program in place, the, the challenge is the funding. So how to leverage on, on private sector and how the private sector and the international rubber fora could work together to address some of the priority topics we commonly agreed upon and how we can attract funds from the private sector to work on these topics. This is, so all the panelists are well aligned in that thought. And I like to pose the same question to Dr. Assis. What do you see as a way forward on these three days of uh, uh, climate change discussions and its impact on the natural rubber systems? Okay, the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the opportunity to go for these COP meetings and tell the good story of rubber. First, we must convince the NR producing countries. They send delegation. They never include anyone from the rubber sector to go together with that government delegation, which is important. The voice will be heard. On top of that, you have NRPC, Association of Natural Rubber Producing Countries, should be also there. IFDB, I think important enough for us to be there and to work with the other research, uh, C4 to bring up this issue so that it will be recognized. Because um, it's important to, to consider that when you talk about food security, you know, smallholders, when they're planting rubber, they have to get the additional income and it's always the, so that's, that is happening during the early stages of the plant. And you can have a farming system. 
this is looking at climate change, everything, that piece of land can be something that is not just uh, grown for rubber, but grown also for food. Because they, you know, while to wait for the trees to mature, this is another issue I have to highlight. We have to work to reduce the immaturity period. Sometimes it takes them eight years before they can get the income. So in between, while the trees were young, they can have the intercropping. That's, that's one. The other aspect that the way forward, we must also create opportunities for value addition that the smallholders can benefit. As it stands now, that's why they're under pressure. They produce the rubber, everybody knows it's for the tire companies. There are 50,000 products that can be made from natural rubber. But the cooperative will have to be involved. I think some initiatives is being taken to give the opportunity for the smallholders to enjoy this value addition. That means if the co-op can, they can get the latex from the farmers, make some product. We saw the acre, you know, right in the middle of somewhere, they produce. They get the latex, they produce condom. So this, this sort of deep goods is possible. And I, we have seen cases in Thailand, they are, they are using that for the, from the latex, they make foam pro products. So this is one area, I think looking at the way forward, that we need to help the smallholders so that they can, they can continue to depend on rubber. My concern now, what we are very worried about, smallholders are beginning to say rubber, there is no future for them, they just move away. Once majority of them leave, to bring them back, going to be very, very difficult. Then we lose the opportunity. The other thing, uh, this has been highlighted, that m not much of R&D on climate change. Let me just point out, climate change is a new issue. You know, first, general public know about climate change, 1990, you know, by, the, by that book, the gentleman who wrote The End of Nature. That's how we highlighted. But until today, many people don't believe in climate change. You know, the, I want to point out that in terms of one crop, so much resources being devoted, so much time, so many researchers involved worldwide. The oldest rubber institute in the world is Sri Lanka. It's still in existence. It's still doing work for the smallholders. So this, this is a crop that a lot of science, technology, and innovation has gone in. It will continue. So I think this is very important. As far as funding, you know, government with this COVID-19 is a paralysis of the world's economies. Very, very tough time. And part of the reason why the tires, you know, they are stuck also because millions of cars are not being sold. Smallholders are feel, feeling the pain. So I think we need to have a system whereby some contributions will come. The tire companies are very concerned. They love the smallholders. Why don't they contribute something to help with the research? Then you can tell them, now you not very transparent, we are helping you. They will be very cooperative. That's the direction to go. Otherwise, where do we get the funding? We used to get grant from the Common Fund of Commodities to help the African rubber industry. The three countries, Nigeria, I think you know about this, Salvatore knows about this. But today it's not easy to get funds from somewhere. Governments also are facing difficulty with having to inject stimulus packages. So how, how do we expect them to now come out and help uh, with uh, a further R&D? So things are becoming more difficult, but we have to, uh, we should not give up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Assis. Certainly, yes, all the panelists as well agreed that we need to communicate. Yes, that yes, means you. we need to have narratives and storytelling on natural rubber and also on what is the role of small growers in that uh, natural rubber space. So communication, storytelling, whether it is story or narratives, all of us have to re-emphasize on that. And there is opportunity for opening uh, multilateral dialogue on these topics. Certainly, Vincent can add more into that. And what is the way forward from that perspective? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi. I, I would first support uh, what uh, Dr. Aziz, Jérôme saint and, 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 and Salvatore Pinizotto have said, uh, and, and add to the point to the to their plea for uh, and. I think highlighted by many others. Yes, we need to increase the visibility of the sectors. Not only the, the challenges, the problems, but also the opportunities and, and the solutions. And, and increasing visibility is a lot about communication. 
what what works very well in communication and when it's done in an evidence-based way, I mean, grounded on, 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 on scientific knowledge and, and, and in an organized way. I think the sector is what is, is already quite well organized with IRSG, with IRDB, other actors to, to do this towards these institutions, uh, IPCC, UNFCCC, and other sometimes informal instances. So uh, when, once, if that is the overarching objective, because uh, I would say, and of course, as scientists, we always look at the new research questions, knowledge gaps, and this workshop has led to identify some of those, especially in relation to climate change risks and, 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 and approaches. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't be also too, too, too hard on ourselves. And, and I think there is already a breadth of knowledge, a sum of knowledge that exists uh, and that, that, can be, that can be communicated. So there could be a value coming from this workshop, the search presentation, but also other research that, had, that couldn't make it because we only had three days. Uh, to make a review article summarizing the state of knowledge and also of knowledge gaps in terms of rubber and, and climate change and, and, and possibilities for a way forward. So that, that, that's number one. That would take a bit of time, but, uh, but, but it's more, um, more from the science perspective. Then communicating to other stakeholders. And first, we need to make the most of this event, I think. Uh, we, we need to have, we are the plan with the co-organizers to, to publish proceedings. Uh, many in the question and answers or in the chat have asked for the PowerPoints, uh, for uh, even for the, the recording. So we'll make that available in, in, we seek to make that available in a, in a nice way. Uh, we have the objective and we will discuss that next week uh, with colleagues to write a policy brief. Uh, with recommendations, I think there has been a range of recommendations coming out of these discussions that could be that that could that could be of value. Uh, and uh, and I would say what is very powerful in general is when these are joint products, uh, both the proceedings, the recommendation. They come from a kind of a consortium that is that starts from science and scientific organization. And generally, these joint products are are, are really really powerful to enter into debate. Then, and, and then everybody can use that uh, whenever it engages either with science organization like the IPCC or with, with national or international um, procedures. And, 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 and then lastly, I, I think, um, well, two last points. I think there, there is, uh, yes, the opportunity of 2021, several uh, big uh, opportunities. First, the climate summit, it should have taken place this year. It's not postponed to 2021, but it's a very big milestone because it's the 2020. It was the milestone, uh, and, and this is really some uh, a point of engagement. Um, things happen a lot in the formal negotiation, but things happen also in the corridors and and all side events and etc. And this is also where we need to be present and organized. Um, uh, if if 20 people there tell the same story to different people, it, it starts to build something coherent and that people repeat. And there is also the World Forestry Congress, it's taking place uh, next, next year in, in, in South Korea. Uh, I think when it comes to bioeconomy, uh, a place to gather perhaps uh, private sector actors also about that. And, and, and I think we need to make the most, when, when we look at going into new fields or in new places to explain what rubber is and what it means, in terms of uh, its significance for the economy and also the, or to address some of the, the issues of the sector, we, we need to make the most of these digital spaces to invest the other places. Because what is interesting is that we, when, we did, when we had the objective to do this workshop, we, we thought about a face-to-face -face workshop. So bringing uh, 30, 50 experts to Singapore, <laughs> And discussing during three days and now we ended up with 250 300 participants some of them from the cli climate change sector knowing less about rubber some of them from the private sector or even from the industry we, we would they wouldn't have participated so perhaps we could also look at these places that are organizing these virtual meetings where we can where we can um, bring our messages and yes lastly uh, i think there is a lot that we know 
there's still a lot that we need to, to do to complement the knowledge and to go into implementation. And I think presenting a, an action plan that would, uh, based on research and based on, on bringing new evidence, answer at the same time the issue of climate change adaptation, food security, and, and contribution to the bio-circular bioeconomy and sustainable production and consumption, bringing more resilience and at the same time, uh, um, yeah, more, more, more efficient and more climate friendly uh, production and, and consumption mode. Uh, I guess that is, that is something appealing and I think there are many emblematic solutions in this sector. Diversification of production, diversification of produce that, are, that, are, that could be very, very appealing for either for the industry or for some of the innovations uh, supporting uh, funds. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much, Vincent. It's, uh, all the panelists are well aligned with the thoughts. Uh, so in any, I will open the question to the attendees. People can ask the question. If you want to ask it, please raise the hand or you like to post the questions. Certainly the panelists will address those questions. I think Vincent uh, said um, uh, quite a lot and the whole uh, uh, communication is very important. Communication is something that we have uh, uh, to plan carefully and uh, we have to pay attention to the international agenda and be prepared to be there. Uh, because I think you know, this is what, uh, what really now we have to do. Um, I think you know, we spend some time, uh, as, as Vincent said, to uh, look at uh, what kind of communication this workshop. Um, and uh, I think maybe you know, we still need to have some other thoughts, but you know, uh, it's there. Um, and it's really, really, really important because it could make a difference. And you know, if uh, uh, the importance of RABA comes from different organizations and uh, I think you know, it uh, uh, creates really that force that we need to, to bring uh, NATO Araba at the attention of uh, the international forum. So this is very important. Thank you very much, Salvatore. Yes, it is true that when a collaborative voice is heard and present in any international uh, discussions, that is totally different from one-to-one -one voices everybody trying to make. So the opportunity of collaboration for uh, taking rubber to a next level of discussion to address um, how this uh, wonderful sustainable material could play an active role in the social aspect on the economic aspect and the environment aspect of the society as well as the small grower. It, that can bring a, a positive change, which the sustainable development goal is trying to envisage. And the countries all are engaging and trying to bring these elements through the NDP and NDCs. And which, with the collaboration of all the international organization present today and collaborated for this event can make a big difference bringing the natural rubber and the visibility for natural rubber into a next level. I like to thank all the panelists for their wonderful contribution to the, today's discussion. At the same time, we like to thank all the participants, all the attendees who joined to the event all over the world. I like to give the floor to both Sabatore and Vincent to conclude the session. Thank you very much. Yes, no, just from uh, ISG, ISG uh, side, I wanted to, first of all, uh, thanks to all the colleagues from um, C4FTA, CRAD, uh, uh, of course, Dr. Zitz uh, of IRDB. Uh, without him, we could not do this anyway. 
and uh, I think uh, uh, all the speakers, all the researchers, uh, everyone that has put an effort to give uh, its own contribution uh, uh, during these uh, three days. Uh, now we had a lot of uh, uh, participants from all over the world, really, from South America uh, to Southeast Asia, and I think it was really amazing. Uh, you know, it was more than actually we expected now it's the time to move forward and uh, make uh, you know, some good um, action so first so thanks a lot um, for everything and also the guys working in the it and uh, the backstage i say <laughs> I, the fabio ricci did a very good uh, excellent job uh, no i think we have uh, we have to thank him for for his uh, for his support so thank you so much to everyone. Thank you, Salvatore. And yes, and, and warm thanks to Dr. Aziz and IRDB and, and to IRSV, uh, Salvatore, you, Lakshmi, and, 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 and the team uh, without whom uh, the, this uh, joint workshop wouldn't absolutely not have been possible. Thanks to CIRAD. Uh, CIRAD is a partner of the CGI research program on forestry and agroforestry together with C4 and others. Uh, but 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 thanks to to the experience, thanks to all the presenters, the more than thirty presenters, their time, their interest, three days, uh, and yes, thanks to the incredible back uh, office uh, team. I think we are all learning how to do these new seminars, these new webinars. We we were a bit deceived that it should be virtual. We were looking at you know uh, exchange over coffees, over coffee break, uh, corridor talks. Uh, but I think uh, we managed to have uh, a, a productive, a very productive event, very nice uh, chat. And we look forward to meet next week with the co-organizers to, to really discuss on how we make the most of it uh, for, for the futures, as many have uh, called us to do so. So we hope we live up to the, the task. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody. Thank you so much for your Thank organization. You. Thank you. <laughs> of this webinar. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> bye.